Dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Harold Lee Youngman Sr. put on Christ. So in Christ, may Harold be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Friends, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Harold Youngman. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, in death, resurrection. For Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever li lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we're going to invite you to stand now as we sing our opening hymn, Because He Lives. The words will be on the screen behind me. Please stand. Worth the living 
just because he lives. And then one day I'll cross the river, I'll fight life's final war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know he reigns because he lives. I can fail. And life is worth a living just because he lives. Amen. You may be seated. Thanks to Dr. Andrew and Dr. Sarah Harper for leading us in worship today. Uh, Andrew and Sarah and I uh, had a, a fun moment of being able to share a Herald story, one that I'll get to in, in a few moments here. But for now, I invite you to pray with me uh, using the prayer that's printed in your worship bulletin. Let us join our voices together. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially, we praise you for Harold Youngman, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these, grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them and help us so to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Psalter lesson for this afternoon comes from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our gospel lesson for this afternoon, our selected verses from John chapter 14. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At this time, I'd like to invite up Hunter, who will be sharing a witness on behalf of the family. Hey everybody, I'm Hunter, and uh, it sucks to see you on a day like today, because my grandfather was one of my favorite people ever, and he's everybody's favorite. For a man that could walk into a room and just make friends with absolutely any individual is an amazing quality. And to tell him that I miss him is an understatement. Because he taught every man in this family and every boy how to be a man. Taught him something. Made him happy, made him whole. And he's just one of the greatest men I could ever, ever meet and love. And to have him was an absolute blessing. And for a man that exudes love as easy as a sun radiates heat, that's, that's impossible to ever accomplish. And he did it every day. So thank y'all so much for being out here and saying howdy for Mr. Harold. Thank you. Thank you, Hunter. Y'all believe in the Holy Spirit, don't you? I believe in the Holy Spirit. Uh, what Hunter just shared uh, falls right into what I wanted to share today. And that's the fact that Harold Lee Youngman Sr. is a real man. A real man. Now, when I say the phrase, a real man, some of you might have an image in your head. You might have an idea of what a real man looks like, don't you? And I can guarantee you that Harold fits those descriptions. Could he hunt? <laughs> Absolutely he could hunt. Could he fish? You bet he fish, right, Billy? <laughs> he even invented his own lures when he was unhappy with the store-bought brands that he would bring home. He used his ingenuity. He was a tinkerer. He was an inventor. He was an engineer. Could he light a campfire in the pouring rain? <laughs> Yes, he could. And he taught his boys how to do so as well. But being a real man 
is more than just being able to hunt, hunt with a bow, with a rifle that he built with his own two hands. It's more than being able to fish with a rod, and I hear there's plenty of rods that are still at the home. It's, it's more than just knowing how to fix up cars or how to build hot rods or how to drive clutch in a Chevy truck. Being a real man goes deeper than what we see on the surface. First off, Harold was a real man because he was a loving husband. When Billy told me how she and Harold met and how they started dating, well, I was expecting to hear a story about a, about a young man that you know, slicked back his hair and kind of came up to the front door and met the father, gave him a, a firm handshake, maybe brought some flowers. Come on in, son. She's still getting ready for her date. That's what I was expecting to hear. That's not exactly how these two met. Because you see, they rode the same school bus together. And it wasn't quite sweethearts in the beginning, was it, Billy? I learned that Billy's mother didn't want her dating Harold. Why, you may ask? Because of the fact that they rode the same school bus, she knew that Harold sat at the back with the other boys smoking cigarettes. <laughs> you stay away from that Harold Youngman, she would tell Billy. But I guess it's true that good girls like the boys that their mothers tell them not to date because <laughs> they ended up going to prom together. The senior prom was their first date. And from that point on, Billy and Harold were inseparable. Also, Billy's mother and father ended up liking Harold. <laughs> so, so much so, you'd say that they loved Harold. And on the day of their wedding, his father-in-law took him out hunting that morning. I'm just glad he got him back in time for the ceremony. <laughs> or we might not be here. Harold was a real man. Not only because of the love that he had for his wife, of 61 years, but also for the love that he had for his children and his grandchildren, his great-grandchild. Because of Billy's and Harold's work schedules, it often fell to Harold to attend the parent-teacher conferences at school to assist the boys with their extracurricular activities. And scouting was one of those extracurricular activities. He'd put his engineering skills to work when helping the boys uh, design their Pinewood Derby cars. If we've got scouts in the room, you know exactly what I mean with Pinewood Derby cars. You get that block of wood, you got four plastic uh, wheels. We got them up here, there it is. Can I, can I lift this up? This is an award-winning Pinewood Derby car, ladies and gentlemen. It won. All, all of their cars won. Now, you can say that there is a bit of jealousy amongst the other scouting dads because, well, they were face-to-face -face with a real man. <laughs> and the very next year, the design was, was somewhat similar to this design. And so there were accusations of cheating. <laughs> Well, those are the cars that you used in last year's Derby. You can't use those cars. Well, this didn't sit too well with Mr. Harold. So he drove home. He got the winning cars out of the trophy case. He drove back to where the Pinewood Derby was taking place. He put them there on the table. He said, see, they're different cars. And, and just for good measure, just as a point of emphasis, he placed the championship trophy down on the table too, just to make a point, just for good measure. They were up against a, a real man who had integrity and was going to make sure that they made a new car every year that they raced in the Pinewood Derby. 
There's an entire lifetime of stories that we could share, right, Lee and Les and Lane? Bringing home those uh, snowball desserts, you know which ones I'm talking about? He'd bring them home in his lunchbox instead of enjoying it himself, just so that he could share it with his boys. He taught them how to drive in his green Chevy truck. If they ended up uh, hitting a fence, well, he didn't get upset. He taught them how to fix the fence and how to fix the car. <laughs> and then they went right along. He taught them how to water ski, how to dive off of 20 foot high cliffs into the water. Billy might not have enjoyed that, that one too much now, did you? They spent days on the water at Sardis and at Pickwick. There's the time that the county sheriff blinked his lights at Harold and Billy as they uh, flew down the road on their way to the hospital when Chase was born. There's the 15,000 miles Harold put on his truck the year that Hunter, Hayden, and Brooke lived with Billy and Harold, their grandparents in Mississippi, while they attended school in Bartlett, the countless baseball games that he would attend, the fishing trips that they would take. There's the time that he spent with his older brother, James, and his younger sister, Katie. I loved hearing the story of... Uh, James serving in the Navy and, and the impact that that had on Harold. And Katie as a little girl being able to pick her up. They had low ceilings in the house and he'd, he'd hold her up against the ceiling and just tickle her, tickle her tummy. Little Katie who was a flower girl in his and Billy's wedding. He was a real man. Not just because he could do all the manly things, but because he loved his wife he loved his kids. He loved his grandkids. He's a man who loved his family. He would do anything for them and for their happiness. But one other way that we know that Harold was a real man is the fact that he was a man of principle and of morals who had an unwavering faith in Jesus Christ. And that's what turns our attention today to the verses I read from John chapter 14 and the 23rd Psalm. Because in those verses, we read about having a room prepared for us in our Father's house. In the 23rd Psalm, which I saw many of you reciting with me as I was reading it aloud, we memorize and we commit to our hearts that we will live in the house of the Lord forever. Even in this prayer that we just prayed. We prayed for God to bring us at last with them, with him, into the joy of your home God's home, God's house, the house of the Lord. Harold believed in living in God's house. He believed that we would go to live in the house of the Lord forever. And so here's the thing, friends. We are not promised a private mansion I think I was sold on the idea when I was a little kid that I would get to heaven and I'd have my own plot of land. I'd have my own 40 acres, two-story house, white picket fence. Be nice to have a, a pond out back where we could fish in too. We're not promised that. We're not told that we're gonna have our own mansion in a gated community up in heaven. What we are told is that Jesus goes to prepare a place for us in his father's house. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. In my father's house, there are many rooms. We're guaranteed a room. It's not an ordinary room and it's not an ordinary house. It's the house of the Lord. What better place 
to spend our eternal life than inside God's home. And when I think of home, and I think about the, the man that Harold was and is, I think about how he made everybody feel at home. You felt it, haven't you? Maybe it was coming to worship here in this building and you were greeted by Harold. He'd be one of the first faces that you saw. He'd greet you with a smile, a hearty hello, a handshake. Maybe you've experienced this hospitality at a holiday meal or going to Billy and Harold's home to visit them and say hello. Always there to make sure that you are, you are comfortable, to make sure that you know how loved you are. This was his gift as a real man who loved his wife, who loved his family, and who made other pe people feel as though they were always at home when they were in his presence. I'll share that in the late fall, early winter of, goodness gracious, it must have been 2018. That seems like a lifetime ago with all that our world's been through. I came to this church building. It had a different name. It was Crossroads United Methodist Church. I learned that before as Crossroads, there was a, a healthy core group of individuals from St. James United Methodist Church. Billy and Harold were included in that group who came to this plot of land and built this building. And when I came here with members of my team, as we were looking for a place to grow and possibly another church family to do ministry with, it was Billy and Harold who were in the kitchen at the front door, welcoming us, making us feel at home. The tables got pushed together. The tables can always grow when you're with Billy and Harold. It had to grow when you were at Harold's mama's house get that card table out, get that folding table out, put it at the end so that there's more room at Thanksgiving. Well, that's exactly what he did for me. That's what he did for the people of Peace Tree. That's what he did for every person that ever walked into this building or encountered Harold. He made them feel at home. And that gives me comfort and peace to know that he is at home. He's in God's home. And I imagine that up there, he's got people in stitches just laughing <laughs> at his stories. He, he's a real man. He's also a real kidder. Did y'all know that? <laughs> One of those parent-teacher conferences that he had to go to, I don't know which boy uh, maybe got into a, 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 a bit of trouble with the teacher that day. But when he came home, he told Billy, you're not going to believe this, but their teacher looks like Miss Piggy. <laughs> the Muppet, Miss Piggy. Oh, Harold, that's not true. You can't mean, no, seriously, Billy. She looks like Miss Piggy. Billy finally did meet this teacher and she concurred that she did in fact look like Miss Piggy. So if you got in trouble for calling her Miss Piggy, I think all's forgiven now. Uh, you're definitely justified if, if mom and dad both think she looked like Miss Piggy. I just feel like he's got them in stitches, hearing the stories, hearing about y'all, the ones that he loved the most. Jimbo shared with me the other day, he thinks that Jim and Harold are up there playing cards right now. I had a few of those opportunities to play uh, dominoes and cards with members of our church on Tuesdays. And I cherish the few times we had before, uh, before businesses got shut down and we were put into quarantine. 
because I'm looking forward to that next card game and that next, uh, that next game of uh, Mexican train dominoes with him. He made people feel at home. He'd make the children of this church know that they were loved. He loved saying hello to the babies. <laughs> he loved seeing them grow up and start to walk and run around the gym and up and down the halls. I'm, I will always be thankful for he and Billy coming to me. Uh, I remember it was one Sunday. I didn't know exactly what was going on at first. Pastor Chris, can we see you? They called me into the kitchen. I went in. He's like, we have something for you. I was like, well, what's going on? He pulled out a Happy Meal toy. <laughs> a Happy Meal toy. What's going on here? Well, mama only needs as much as a Happy Meal has. <laughs> and we figured your son would like this toy. The first time they had done that, they had saved up several weeks of toys that they wanted my son to have. Because that's what a real man does. He thinks about others. He thinks about the next generation especially the next generation of believers who will come to know Jesus Christ and love Jesus as much as Harold did. And I always will have those Happy Meal stories that I will hold close to my heart. And I will always be thankful for the ways that Harold made me feel at home here. He's a real man. He's a real man who loved the people that came into his orbit. And so all of us are gathered here today in order to give thanks to God. I said it at the very beginning of our service. We have gathered here today to praise God. And it really does stink that it's under these circumstances, Hunter. But we praise God together because we know where he is. We know where his soul is at rest. We know whose home he lives in. We praise God and we thank God for all that Harold was and is to us. And we reflect on the promises of scripture, on the 23rd Psalm, on the gospel of John, on Jesus's words, because we realize that the promises that are true for Harold are true for us as well. Jesus goes to prepare a place for us. We will not be alone. Jesus will come to us. One more story about how Harold made people feel at home. If you know this area, you know that there was an assisted living facility that was built just right around the corner several years back. And Harold was the bus driver. He would go in the crossroads bus every week to pick up our neighbors who lived there, the residents of that living facility. And they were so thankful for this kind, generous, friendly man to be so dutiful every week coming to pick them up, to bring them so that they could worship with the body of Christ, not have to watch on TV, not have to listen to a radio evangelist, but to be able to come and to be with people, whether they were members of this church or not. He gave them a lift. He drove them here so that they could worship God with the family of God. And as the years went by and we saw other members and neighbors crossing that great river. There were less and less folks that he would have to pick up. He would start just bringing his car, his vehicle. He got down to one woman, a faithful United Methodist woman named Miss Beverly. And she was so grateful. It's been hard filling those shoes because of how committed he was to making people feel at home. So I give thanks to God today for Harold. I give thanks to God for the promise of Psalm 23. I give thanks to God for Jesus's words out of the gospel of John. 
that says we have a room waiting for us in God's own house. So as we honor Harold and as we surround this beautiful family with our loving care today, may we remember that Jesus prepares a room for us in his father's house. And when our day to cross that river comes, this is what I imagine we'll see. We're going to see Mr. Harold waiting for us at the pearly gates, ready to give us a ride back home in the church van. <laughs> Thank God for Harold Youngman, a real man, a loving spouse, an amazing father and grandfather, a man of God who loved Jesus, who loved his church, and who did everything in his power to make sure that God's children felt at home whenever he was around. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. in Would you be in an attitude of prayer? You may keep your eyes open. You may close your eyes. You may look up to the heavens. You may bow your heads in reverence. However you want to worship God in this moment, I invite you to do so now. Into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Harold Lee Youngman Sr., Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. 
Receive Harold Youngman into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints of light. Amen. As I spoke with Andrew and Sarah, we swapped stories of their time as uh, the worship leaders of Crossroads United Methodist Church and as we have had time here in this building as Peachtree United Methodist Church, we received the same request, the same hymn request every week without fail from Mr. Harold, just a closer walk with thee. It has continued on uh, regardless of the location, the worship leader, the name on the church building. And so what a better song uh, to remember him and to honor him by and then by singing his favorite hymn, one we would sing at Him Sings, one that we would sing in worship. Just a closer walk with thee. It will serve as our closing hymn, and then we will hear a dismissal with a blessing before moving to the fellowship hall in the gym for a meal and a reception with the family. But right now, I'll invite you, if you will, to please stand as Andrew and Sarah lead us in singing this final hymn together. Friends, I invite you to receive uh, this blessing with open hearts and with open eyes. Now to the one who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of God's glory with rejoicing, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Friends, this concludes our service. We'll ask that you uh, perhaps keep your seats for just a moment. We'll give the family some time to maybe make their way to the fellowship hall and to the gym. And there you can greet them. We can enjoy a meal together. We can share some stories about Harold, a real man, and how much he loved us so. Thank you so much for being with us today. God bless you and be at peace. Thank you.